Ever wondered how crude oil transforms into petrol, or how whiskey gets its unique flavor? The answer lies in the magic of distillation, a process that's as fascinating as it sounds. Distillation, at its core, is a technique used to separate mixtures based on differences in their volatilities in a boiling liquid mixture. It's a method that has been used for centuries, from the creation of alcoholic beverages to the production of fuels and essential oils. At the heart of this process is the concept of vapor-liquid equilibrium. This principle explains how different components of a mixture will evaporate at different rates, allowing for their separation. It's like a dance between liquid and vapor, where each component knows its cue to take the stage. So, distillation is a powerful technique, but how does it work? Let's dive deeper. Scene script. Picture this, you have a liquid mixture, heat it, and the molecules start to vaporize, but what happens next? Well, let's take a moment to dive into the fascinating science behind this process. As you heat a liquid, the molecules gain kinetic energy and start to transition into a gaseous state, creating a vapor. This is the process of evaporation. However, not all molecules in the vapor phase have enough energy to stay as a gas. Some lose energy and return to the liquid state, a phenomenon known as condensation. Now when the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation, we reach a state of equilibrium. This is what we call vapor-liquid equilibrium. It's like a dance, a delicate balance where the number of molecules escaping the liquid equals the ones returning. This equilibrium is the cornerstone of distillation. But what happens when we have miscible systems? Stay tuned to find out. Imagine mixing two liquids that blend seamlessly. Think of water and alcohol, how do we separate them? The answer is through the distillation of miscible systems. When we talk about miscible systems, we refer to mixtures of liquids that can mix in all proportions. Distillation comes into play as a separation technique, exploiting differences in boiling points. As we heat the mixture, the component with the lower boiling point vaporizes first, which we can then condense and collect separately. Now let's introduce the concept of boiling point diagrams. Imagine a graph with temperature on the y-axis and the composition of the mixture on the x-axis. The lines on this graph represent the boiling points of the components at different concentrations. By following these lines we can predict and control the outcome of the distillation process. Understanding boiling point diagrams is key to distillation. But what about equilibrium and differential distillation? That's a story for the next scene. In distillation, not all processes are created equal, some are more efficient than others, but why? To answer that, let's delve into the world of equilibrium distillation first. This process relies on the principle of equilibrium, a state where the concentration of a substance remains constant over time. In distillation, this refers to the balance between the liquid and vapor phases of a mixture. When this balance or equilibrium is achieved, the composition of the liquid and vapor phases remains constant. However, equilibrium distillation has its limitations. It assumes that the mixture is in perfect equilibrium at all times which is not always the case in real-life scenarios. The equilibrium can be disturbed by changes in temperature, pressure or concentration, leading to inaccuracies in the final product. And this is where differential distillation steps in to save the day. Differential distillation, unlike equilibrium distillation, doesn't assume that the mixture is in a state of perfect equilibrium. Instead, it allows for the fact that the composition of the vapor and liquid phases can change over time. This makes it a more accurate process, especially when dealing with mixtures that have components with similar boiling points. To execute differential distillation, the distillate is collected continuously, and the composition of the distillate changes throughout the process. This means that different components of the mixture are separated at different times providing a higher degree of control and precision. However, it's not all roses. Differential distillation can be time-consuming and requires careful monitoring to ensure the desired results, but when precision is paramount, the extra effort is well worth it. Differential distillation offers more precision, but for even better results we turn to rectification and fractionating columns. Stay tuned to learn more about these fascinating processes in our next segment. We've seen how distillation works, but how do we make it more efficient? Now let's dive into the fascinating world of rectification, fractionating columns and the all-important heat and material balance. Rectification is our first stop. Essentially it's distillation but with a twist. It's a process that refines and enhances the separation efficiency of a mixture by repeated distillation in the same system. Think of it like distillation but on a loop, 
continuously improving the separation of the components. And how does this happen? That's where our next topic comes in. Fractionating columns. These are the real heroes of the distillation process. They are designed to facilitate the separation of mixtures into their individual components or fractions. Picture a tall tower filled with a series of plates or trays. The vapors rise through the column, interact with the descending liquid on each tray, and voila. With each interaction, a bit more of the less volatile components condense, and the more volatile components vaporize, resulting in an increasingly pure product. Now, on to the heat and material balance. When it comes to distillation, we're playing with heat exchange and mass transfer. We heat the mixture to vaporize it, then cool it to condense it. The heat and material balance is the mathematical representation of all these heat inputs, outputs, and material flows in the system. It's like the blueprint of the distillation process. It ensures that what goes into the system equals what comes out, maintaining the fundamental law of conservation of mass. And why is this important? Well, it helps us optimize the distillation process. By understanding the heat and material balance, we can adjust variables like heat input or reflux ratio to maximize efficiency and yield. So, we see that rectification, fractionating columns, and the heat and material balance all play critical roles in making distillation more efficient. They ensure that we get the most out of our mixture with the least waste. Efficiency is crucial in distillation, but what factors affect it? Well, that's a story for another scene, stay tuned. Distillation is a complex process with many factors at play, but what are they? Let's dive in. The plate theory of distillation is a model that helps us understand how distillation works. It's based on the concept that a distillation column operates as a series of separate equilibrium stages or plates. But just like any theory, its efficiency can be influenced by several factors. These include the vapor and liquid flow rates, the column's pressure, and the temperature. A higher vapor flow rate can increase the efficiency, while higher pressure can reduce it. Temperature plays a dual role affecting both the vapor and liquid phases. Now let's shift gears and talk about molecular distillation. This is a type of distillation performed under high vacuum conditions, which allows for the separation of substances with very close boiling points. It's like precision surgery but for molecules. The high vacuum conditions reduce the boiling points of the substances, allowing them to be separated at lower temperatures. This makes molecular distillation particularly useful for heat-sensitive materials as it minimizes thermal degradation. Finally, let's talk about azeotropes. An azeotrope is a mixture of two or more liquids that maintains its composition in vapor and liquid states. This means it boils at a constant temperature, making it difficult to separate the components by conventional distillation. However, with some creativity, we can get around this problem. The most common method is to add a third component, known as an entrainer, which disrupts the azeotrope and allows the original components to be separated. To sum up, Plate theory efficiency is influenced by flow rates, pressure, and temperature. Molecular distillation is a high-precision method performed under vacuum, and azeotropes can be separated by using an entrainer. Azeotropes present a unique challenge in distillation, but what about immiscible systems? Our final stop on this distillation journey takes us to immiscible systems. What happens when liquids simply won't mix? Well, the distillation of immiscible systems is intriguingly complex. It involves the separation of liquids that don't dissolve into each other, like oil and water. Here's the catch though. The boiling points of these substances do not necessarily have to be different. Instead, the distillation process relies on the principle that these liquids will not mix and will form separate layers. This process can be more challenging than distilling miscible systems. The separation is not always clean and additional steps may be required to achieve a pure product. But why is this important? It's often used in industries such as petrochemicals and food processing, where different substances need to be separated without altering their properties. Distillation is truly a fascinating world, full of complexities and nuances. Subscribe for more because you won't find me later.